I was like, how rude, like, you're British, you have a cup of tea and it makes everything better. My mum and I just cried down the phone. Idiots, to, to leave a hob on, they are... my channel I hope everyone is doing okay and keeping safe if you're new here I would love it if you could join me subscribe to my channel like this video and comment down below and yeah so before I start today's video um, I don't know if anyone can notice but I've had a little bit of a declutter in my room so behind me um, I took away some of the photos and everything to make my background look a little bit more I don't know like a little bit more simpler so not I liked it before and I loved my photos but I just wanted to make my room a little bit less like decluttered, I just wanted to make it a bit more simple. So yeah, I took some photos off the um, off the heart in the background and I sw switched over my pin board so I've got that, that nice um, butterfly thing there. So let me know what you think of my background and I'm not also sure but um, I pulled my curtains back that are um, where my phone is now and I definitely think it's made a difference to the lighting so if you think the lighting is better also like let me know if you think let me know if you think the lighting is better in this video than before so anyway today's video is going to be my first travel kind of video so I'm going to be doing a story time slash experience and questions of my time in Krakow so I've got some questions on well I got them off my phone from Instagram stories but I've written them down in my notepad so just to start with, I'll explain that I went to Krakow in December last year, just before Christmas. I think it was about a week before Christmas. I went on my own. So, um, I mean, if you know me, you'll know that I've been travelling before. Like, I've been on my own travelling, like flying on my own, but I've never really been solo. -y or, oh, I've never been solo on my own. So I've always done like tours in the past so I did a tour two years ago to Bali so I did all the flying so that was a lot for me there and that was I did all the flying on my own and that was a massive thing then and then I a year ago I went to Morocco um, and I did that on my own but again that was a tour so and then back last summer me and my friend went and did traveling we interrailed around Europe so that that trip gave me like an insight into like hostels and like solo traveling even though i wasn't solo traveling it uh, gave me an insight into how it would be on my own like like meeting people that were solo traveling and everything so i'm definitely interested in solo traveling in the future but this trip to krakow in december i was like i want to go somewhere i wanted to go somewhere cold like to that kind of holiday and I thought it'd be nice to go somewhere at Christmas. So I thought, oh, that'd be a nice thing to do. And I thought it'd also be a good thing to do to actually go somewhere on my own and be solo -y. oh, and be and be on my own for like four or five days, whatever. So that's what I did. I booked my trip to Krakow and I booked an Airbnb for this instead of a hostel because I thought, oh, it'd be nice just to treat myself and get um, spend a little bit more, not an awful lot of money because if you. One thing I'll say about Krakow straight, straight away is that Krakow was really cheap. I booked my accommodation for an Airbnb, I think it was about £90 or £100 for five nights. So it was really, really, really cheap. Um, I will go into my Airbnb experience later on in the video because I have a bit of a story time on that. But yeah, so I went to Krakow the end of December and I loved Krakow. So I'm going to ask some questions on Krakow. And then, yeah, if you have any more questions that I didn't answer, then do leave them down below in the comments and I'll answer those again, because I'm very good at not, I'm getting sidetracked, I don't know whether, hopefully I'll answer everything. So the first question that I've got is, what was my favorite and my least favorite thing about Krakow? My so. most favorite thing about Krakow is that you could literally, everything was walking distance. You didn't really have to, there were trams, but you didn't really have to go you could just walk everywhere. I My Airbnb was about 10, 15 minutes walking distance into the main square. And yeah, I just, I literally, I walked everywhere. I didn't really, I don't think I went on any public transport at all really. So that was the great thing about Krakow is that if you go, you don't need to spend a lot of money going on trains or trams or metro. You can literally walk everywhere. So that was my favorite thing. And another favourite thing about Minor Krakow was that when I went, I went at Christmas, so there were all the markets, so I loved the food and I just took advantage of being able to have 
the food at the markets, all the traditional Polish food, which is normally like home cooked skews and things like that and bread. Oh, it was so good. That was literally what I did every night for my dinner. I was like, what am I gonna eat tonight? I was like, oh, I'll just go back down to the markets. And they, I think they have like their main important things, not important things, their main traditional foods are things like pork knuckles, dumplings, um, and I think they do like, they do a lot of traditional Polish soups as well. So things like that, and I just, I love the food. So that's one of my favorite things. So my least favorite thing was that being alone, sometimes being alone, it can be hard to meet people, especially the fact that I, I stayed in an Airbnb. So usually like back in the summer, like if I was staying in a hostel and it was summertime probably, it's so easy, easy to meet people. But I think it's a bit hard when you're staying in an Airbnb to go out there and meet people because people who are in groups, they're less, they don't, you don't really think when you're in a group of people to see someone on their own and really talk to them. So that was my least favorite thing. And sometimes I did get a little bit lonely, but actually looking back at it, I was never lonely. I, I did, I did speak to people. I went to this bar um, and it became one of my favorite places. I'll talk about it later, but I met this lovely couple. They were probably in their like fifties and they just started chatting to me. They were from England as well. And it, we chatted for probably like an hour. I was having cocktails in this bar and they were just chatting to me about like my life, their life, all the things they'd done. And you don't have to be in the same age group or even have the same interest to like, you know, to talk to people and get to get on with people. So it, you can meet a lot of people on your So own. my next question is, what was your favorite places to go for like breakfast and brunch? So I, because I was on my own, I didn't really go out for breakfast. I think if you were in a couple with your friends, you would, you would go out to find places to eat for breakfast. But, and because I was on a bit of a budget, I tried to just go to like supermarkets, buy yogurt, fruit, granola, have that in my breakfast in the Airbnb before I left. Or what I would do if I was going out a bit later or something, I didn't I didn't get around to having breakfast. Um, what I did is I stopped off at the little shop and I would buy myself a little snack for breakfast. What I became, when I was in Krakow, I became obsessed with the little um, croissants you get in the packets. Um, I, so the ones that I loved the most and I, discovered when I was in Krakow was the cookies and cream croissants. Oh my God, they are to die for. But what I will say is that in the main square, around the outside of the main square, there are lots of like cafes and they have like a Costa and like lots of little coffee shops. So that would probably be a really good place to go for breakfast. And there probably are lots of other little cafes and hidden places that I didn't find because I didn't really look out to go for breakfast. So my next question is, what are your favorite food and drinks in Krakow? So I definitely think, like I said before, the food at the Christmas markets was my favorite thing to have just in the evenings, because it was cheap and it was easy to grab something. So like traditional food, like dumplings and stews and soups and things like that. And it really good because it's really filling as well. It's like nice and warm, especially when it's colder, it really warms you. Another thing that I loved in Krakow is they have a special bread that it is their traditional, I don't think it's even like, I don't think it's just a Polish thing. I think it is just a Krakow bread that they make. It's called, I've got it written, I've got it written down here. It's a really long name. It's called, I have to try and remember what it's called. Um, it's called Obwazen Kraknowski. Basically it's like the, the ring bread you get with like almost like a donut shape. I'll, I'll insert a photo here of, um, of what it is because yeah, on my last day, I did a bread baking class and it was so interesting to find out about like the history behind the bread and everything. So I'll, yeah, I'll insert a photo of this bread that I did. So I didn't, we didn't actually make it, but we got to like, we got to roll the dough and add like whatever seeds and things we wanted on top. And then we found out about the history and then they cooked them for us and then we got to eat them afterwards. And oh my God, that like fresh dough that, that just came out of the oven, it was like to die for, it was so good. So drinks wise, there are a lot of like coffee shops, like I said, around the market, if you're interested in going for like a coffee or cup of tea and snack. But if you're old enough um, to go and have a alcoholic drink, that my favorite bar when I went to Krakow was the Alcatraz bar. And basically it's, if you've heard of the Alcatraz, it's like the old themed Al Alcatraz from America, there used to be an old prison, didn't there? If you ever go to Krakow, you really need to go to this bar because it was so cool. I went there about at least three times. And yeah, I met a few people when I was there, had a few conversations, and they did like the best cocktails ever. So again, I'll insert a picture of my cocktail here. 
and yeah that is the best bar to go to and also because i went there christmas they had mauled wine at the market so the mauled wine was so nice as well so Next i love question that. is what are my top five places to see in krakow so my first one is the main square especially if you go at christmas this is so pretty because they have markets they have they had a stage where like they had like singing they had children singing and performances and all sorts and as well they had the markets and then down the middle of the main square they had like they had their usual stalls so even if you go at any time in the year there's always some kind of stalls down the middle of the there's a name for it the the bit in the middle of the the, the bit in the middle of the square where they are like stalls and stuff if I, if I can remember that yeah i'm not sure i can't remember what it's called but so yeah if you go there the main square is like the main thing and i think historically the main square is like the biggest square in like europe or something i'm not sure but it's a massive square so yeah and then um if you're a girl or if you're anyone that likes shopping there's a massive shopping mall it's called gallery Kraknowska. or oh, gallery gallery Kraknowska is called and they have loads of shops there they have um oh they have a bath and body works there so at the time i went there i think i went there twice i went there once and i didn't have a lot of time because i had a tour so i went there and had a little wander first and then i went back again but um i didn't really have a lot of budget i didn't have a lot of money to go crazy shopping i didn't have the space to you know take back like five bags of clothes either so i didn't really buy a lot i bought myself one top from one shop i think or two i bought myself a couple of things anyway but i i definitely i spent a lot of time in the bath and body works just smelling candles and i really wanted to get one but again they weren't cheap and they like, candles are quite heavy to take back aren't they so i didn't get one which i was i did i did really want one but um maybe at some point in the future i'll get a bath and body works candle so my third thing to see is the salt mine the salt mine isn't actually in krakow but it's only about 15 20 minute drive out of Krakow and I did a tour from like Get Your Guide and I we I met like a group and I met we got on a bus and we got on a bus in Krakow and then we went to the salt mine we did that and it probably took like an hour no it took a few hours this tour this tour was like a few hours and a lot of these tours that I did as well they weren't massive they weren't really expensive which was also a great thing about it so um yeah, I would definitely say the salt mine is really interesting to find out about the whole historical things about Krakow. And the next place I would say to go to is Wawel Castle. Actually, no, it's not called Wawel. It's called Vav Vavel, I think. So it's it's pr pronounced Wawel or Wow. Well, I can't. It's such a tongue twister. But the Polish pronounce it with like a V. So it's called Vavel Castle, I think. So they have the castle and, a, and they have a cathedral in there. I went up and I didn't have I didn't have a lot of money. So all I did is I spent I spent five pounds to get an audio when I went around the cathedral. So you put like a little set of headphones on and then you go around and it tells you the audio guide tells you where to go, which was really good and it tells you so much information. Um, and then. I did that and then I just walked around the grounds of the castle and it was so pretty. So anyway, I went to the castle and then afterwards I walked around and then if you go down, there's um, the river, the Vistula River I think it's called, is just at the bottom and there's like a walkway. So it was really pretty because the day I went it was really sunny so you could see all of the, it was just really pretty to walk along by the river. So my last thing if you're in Krakow is to do all the historical side of things. So. Obviously there's Auschwitz. I didn't go to Auschwitz because I was I was on my own and I just didn't really because all the tours, a lot of them, they were like four day tours or very long, like eight hours to ten hour tours. And I'm if I was really into history I would, but I'm I'm really not and I was like I wanna do some kind of history of Krakow and especially because I was on my own and because of everything that happened at Auschwitz, I was a bit like I don't know if I really want to go there, especially not on my own. I now know, looking back though, that I would have, I wouldn't have been on my own because all the tours that I did do, you were in groups of people and you met and you got to like talk to people. So I wouldn't have been on my own if I'd done it. But I'm kind of glad I didn't because it would have taken up a whole day of my trip and I was only there for like four, five days. So I didn't do Auschwitz, but I did do, 
I went to this, I did a tour that took half a day. I went, we went to the Schindler's factory and that was enough for me. That was like, you saw all the pictures of everything that happened back in like World War II, I think, or World, no, World War One. Um, you saw all the pictures and everything, like all these horrible pictures. And that was enough for me just seeing the pictures, let alone being at Auschwitz. So I didn't think I really wanted to be in that place where so much happened. So Schindler's Factory. So I did this, I did this half day tour, went to Schindler's Factory. We went, then drove around the ghetto. So that was so interesting to drive around, like where it all happened, like the, which bit was a ghetto and how, there was such a separation from the ghetto and the other side of the ghetto. Um, so that was really interesting, really driving around in this little car. It was quite, like, it was sad. Obviously, obviously it was sad, but it was so interesting. But yeah, and then we went to the, the cathedrals. So there's one cathedral that's just outside of the ghetto. And then there's one that would have been inside of the ghetto. So we went to these two different cathedrals and got to look around so those. The next question is, what was the scariest part or what was the scariest experience you had in Krakow? So I've got like a story time on this, I'm gonna tell you now. So I arrived in Krakow, so I booked this Airbnb. I might again attach the pictures of the Airbnb. It was really cheap and I was like, oh, that'd be all right. That'd be a good place to stay. Um, I got there, I had a massive suitcase as well. So I got there and I, I basically, I didn't realise that the Airbnb was right at the top of this big old building, so it was five stories high, and I'd read the like the information from the Airbnb and it said room one, so there I was looking for room one. I couldn't find it, like, I couldn't find the room, and then I was also looking for like the key, the box of keys that I had to get to get into the, the flat which at the time I got, I think there was a bit of confusion with what was written down on the listing. Um, I didn't realise it was actually a shared accommodation. So there was like two little, two, two rooms in this flat, whereas I thought from reading the, the Airbnb listing that it was just one flat for like one person or one couple. So obviously it wasn't. So I got there and I was looking around, I couldn't find it. I tried to ask people, people like if, they could help me and there wasn't really anyone that really seemed willing to i didn't realize obviously again i didn't realize is this building was actually a massive flat flat this building was like massive flats so there were people that like lived in this building and then the people that owned the airbnb just obviously just owned that flat so um i was trying to ask people or i was like oh do you know blah de blah the guy the airbnb host and everyone was like no like like they, they, they had no clue who this guy was. So then the more and more that I couldn't find this room, luckily there was this lady that helped me. She was like, help, like I said, I was trying to look for room one and she like helped me have a little look around, but then she couldn't help me. So obviously she had to go, go on with her day and there were people that like worked there and stuff. So they couldn't just help me. But um, so yeah, I got really freaked out. And by what I do is sometimes, especially when I'm traveling, when I'm traveling on my own, I can really panic. So I started by this point because I couldn't find it. I really started to panic. What didn't make it any better was that I tried to contact the host. I couldn't get hold of him. And then I messaged him and basically long and short of it, I messaged him as saying I couldn't get in. He tried to like ask me to like send him the, like my, my location of where I was. So I did that. And basically long and short of it, he was like, once he realized that I was there, he didn't, he didn't help me at all. Like he basically said to me, oh, well you've got all the information you need. Like I can't help you, you have all the information you need. And I was like, how rude? Like, like I was like, I paid to stay in this Airbnb and you're not even helping me find it. I, I, not, I didn't expect him, I didn't know where he lived so I didn't expect him to come down, but he could have called me to help me or tell me. He didn't even, he didn't even tell me like where the flat was so like I, didn't, at this point I wasn't aware that the flat was on the top floor so I was down the bottom floor looking for this this room not knowing that it was on the top floor and he didn't even think to inform me that it was the top floor so I was looking around basically by this point I got really panicked and then I figured it out because on my phone in the wallet app there there was the Airbnb thing and it said apartment 25 room one but when I looked at the listing it didn't say apartment 25 it just said room one so I figured it out then, and then I finally, I just had to 
carried my suitcase all the way to the top of the stairs and I finally figured it out and then I found the keys because obviously the keys were right next to the room on the wall um, but by this point I just got so worked up over it I was just in a absolute tears like my head was completely like gone I was I just freaked out so much and then I got in the room luckily there was no one like in the room when I when I got there there wasn't anyone else there and then I got there and I went in, I got into my room and I just, I rang my mum and I just cried down the phone. Like, I just, I just, I was so like, you know when you get so panicked, I just got so panicked. I just had to, I had to let it all out. And I just, oh, it was, at the time, it felt like such a big thing. Once I got in, I got in, I had a shower, I had a cup of tea, because if you know, if you know me, or like, when you're, you're British, you have a cup of tea and it makes everything better. <laughs> so, um. It was fine in the end. I got there, I had a cup of tea, and I settled in. And then, um, so this guy just walks in, into the apartment. So I didn't have a clue who this guy was. He didn't ring the doorbell. He walks in and he was basically, he was like, he worked for the host and he came in and he was like, oh, I heard you're having some problems. And I was like, yeah. Um, and he was, to be fair, he was really nice. I was expecting him to be like, at first I thought he was the guy that I'd messaged and he was really rude. And I thought, oh God, he's gonna be really like horrible or whatever. But he was a really nice guy. He was like asking me like if everything was okay. And then he was like telling me places that I should go and I should visit. So that was really comforting and really nice that someone was being nice to me after I'd felt so unease like getting there. So um, I, and then I said to him, I said, oh, I haven't got a towel. I didn't, I had no towel. Luckily I brought my like travel towel. So I had something, but it's not really the best thing to use like all the time because it just doesn't dry very well. So I said to him, I said, oh, can I, can I get a towel? And he was like, yeah, yeah. It took 48 hours to get me a towel. So 48 hours later, he brought a towel. By this point, I was like halfway through my trip and I was like, thanks for the towel. And he brought this like tiny little towel. But anyway, he was really nice. So yeah. By that point, I settled in, and after that, it was all fine. But this Airbnb, it just, it wasn't the best place. It was right at the top of like an old building, um, and I, I don't like, um, I don't like being at the top of buildings. So I've always, especially younger, not so much now, but I've got, a, I always have like a bit of a phobia about like fires and stuff. So the thought of being right at the top of a building, I just, I'm just like no. So if I'd have realised or thought more into the fact that this building was right at the top of an old building, I wouldn't have booked it in the first place because I just, I don't like being that high up. So, um, but yeah, so that was my scariest story, that Airbnb, it just wasn't the best place to stay. It wasn't, and obviously every time I went out, I had to climb all the way up and down the, the stairs. So what I did most days is I made sure that I went out in the morning or late morning and I didn't come back until about five, six o'clock or something and I tried to be out for as much of the day as I could be and then I came back and I just like, I chilled there. So basically uh, this Airbnb, I had a couple of different couples stay one or two nights. There was never someone there. There was never just one person there the whole time I was there. I was there for five days, but the, the people that other, other people that stayed were only there for either one or two nights. And I didn't really speak to many of the other people. They they seem friendly enough. But one more thing about this is that this one couple, I think they stayed for one night or two nights. Um, they left, they went, they left one morning before I'd like got up and gone. So I came out of my room about like, must have been about 10 o'clock, I had a bit of a lay in. I came back, came out and um, just to make my thing about fires, like my fear about fires even worse, they left, they left the hob on, they left like the, the hob turned on luckily like I just I just turned it off like it didn't obviously there were no problems at all but I was like what idiots to, to leave a hob on they obviously cut themselves for breakfast but left it on to leave the whole hob on like in like a building that's right at the top, top of, the, of like god god all right but anyway so that is that is that story sorry that was a really long story but that was my story time the next question out. is what are five things to do on a budget in Krakow so this is a great question for me to answer because I was on a budget in Krakow I tried to only I spent about a hundred pounds on my accommodation I spent a hundred pounds actually I think it was less than a hundred pounds on my flights I think they were about 70 or 80 pounds so 200 pounds altogether on flights and accommodation and I didn't really want to spend any more than like 200 pounds spending money when I was there so I definitely was on a budget. So first thing is 
walk. So I did this because you could literally could walk everywhere in Krakow. I got so many steps when I was there. Like some days I got like 15, 20,000. I think one day I nearly even hit, I actually hit about 30,000 steps just from walking around the city all day. And every everything's not too far in distance. So you can literally walk it. And then second thing to do on a budget is again, like I said, visit Vavil Castle because that costs nothing unless you want to spend the five pounds on the audio which i think is definitely worth doing because you find out so much about the cathedral so that and then if you're going at christmas time visit all the markets and the stores yes i know that does involve buying things sometimes but you don't even especially at christmas you don't have to buy things or you can buy a few bits of food but i didn't really buy a lot in the stores i just I spent a lot of time looking around and listening to the music and things so that's quite can be quite inexpensive as well and i would recommend doing the get your guide tours because i so i did about three or four tours so i think all together i did spend about a hundred pounds on tours but that was about that was like i did about three different tours over the, the days so it was definitely worth doing some of the tours were only about 10 20 pounds or whatever so the tours you can really find some inexpensive tours there to do and my final thing is to do a segway tour so i did a segway tour of the city it was about an hour and a half and it was so much fun i like got to talk to people that were in my group and finding out about other people from other countries and stuff that were on the tour and just finding about out a lot of history i don't i find when you when you go somewhere and you don't do these tours you, you i think they're definitely great to do because you find out so much about the history and if i hadn't done these tours and i just walked around i wouldn't have i wouldn't have known i wouldn't have known about the history if i hadn't done the bread making class which was about five pounds the bread making class and it lasted about an hour um if i hadn't done that i wouldn't have learned about the history behind the bread and why they made this bread so yeah, I definitely think doing the tours and doing like, the segway is so much So the fun. next question is accommodation and the best place to stay. So if I'm being honest, where I stayed, I wouldn't recommend, I, I would not stay there again because it wasn't, wasn't the cleanest. There was just, it just wasn't the best place to stay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. So I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna stay like, what it was called because I, that's just a bit unfair but I was going to leave a, a review on the place but I just haven't got round to it because I just was not happy with it. I probably would have given it like a two stars out of five but anyway don't stay where I stayed but I think if you want it would be re it's really not it a lot of people that I spoke to said they stayed like in the main square and that, like that was so pretty so I would either stay in the main square or do what I did and stay a bit further out but it only took me about 10 15 minutes tops to walk in so um yeah so I don't think it really matters I think it can be a bit cheaper to stay a bit further away and do the walking um but it is nice to walk around and see places so I recommend doing that but it, I can also imagine how nice it would be to stay in that main square especially at Christmas when they had all the lights and everything was going on in the main square so it, was, it would be nice to be in in that atmosphere but um yeah there was a lot of atmosphere in the main square but either way I think both would be good like it's up to you what what kind of budget you have so the next question is what are the best kind of outfits for Krakow? So I went in December and so I was prepared. I prepared before this. I was like, right, I'm gonna need thermals. I'm gonna need thermal top. I'm gonna need thermal leggings. I'm gonna need gloves. I'm gonna need like big thick socks because it was, it was forecast to be cold. Like, and apparently in December, normally it's supposed to be like minus, minus five. So I prepared for it to be really cold. So. And then I got there and it, I've got to say when I, and actually the guy that I spoke to at the Airbnb who brought my towel for me eventually, he, um, he was saying that last year was their mildest like December ever. So normally it's really cold and everything. And I, I was prepared for it to be cold. But um, yeah, I mean, I wore most days, I wore jeans and a jumper and I had like a black coat. I took, I took both two coats. I took my big, big white, fluffy thick coat and I also took my black one but I ended up wearing my black coat most of the time because it just went with things but it was really hard when I went to kind of judge the weather because one day I went out and I wore 
black jeans, like boots and socks and a jumper, you know, my coat and the whole lot. And I was walking around all day and I was like sweating. And then the next day I was like, okay, I was really hot yesterday. So I wore like a jumper and a different pair of jeans that were like, you know, like your like ankle length jeans with like trainers. I was like, oh, I'll wear that today because I got really hot. And then that day was the day that it was like four degrees. So compared to it being like 10 or 12 the other day. So it really dropped like one day it was really cold. And the one day that it was cold, I, I dressed for the warmer day. But um, yeah, I would really say, I mean, it's up to you really, whatever your style is, whatever you want. But um, definitely, I think at the moment, obviously in the summer it gets warmer. And I've heard people say, like when I, I have a couple of people that I met when I traveled last year, they, I think it was warm in the, it's, I think it gets warm in the summer, just like, just like the UK does, well, the UK doesn't really get that warm, but. So the next yeah. question is, how is the best way to travel around? Like by foot or by bike, bus, metro? So definitely, like I said already in the video, traveling by foot, I think is the best way. They also have trams. So I think if you wanted to go a bit further out, you can get on the tram to go like out of the city. But I didn't really do that because I don't think I really had enough time to do that. And then, um, there's no metro, there's no metro in Krakow, so definitely walking is the best way. I think they had buses as well, but yeah, I walked everywhere because it was the best the best way to get so, around. So, next question is, what is the best time to visit Krakow? And, I mean, this is a hard one because I've only ever been in December. I think, personally think, because I loved it so much being there at Christmas time, to visit in December because it was so lovely and it was just festive and it was really nice. It just gave you that nice nostalgic feeling of like, oh, it's very pretty and it's... It, it wasn't that cold, but it would be cold. That's the whole reason why I went on this trip because I wanted to go somewhere cold. I wanted to go like somewhere like Switzerland, but that was just, apparently it's expensive to go to Switzerland. So this was like a budget, but yeah. And um, my final question is, are the people friendly and helpful? And yes, I would say, I would say yes. Obviously my Airbnb host guy, he wasn't friendly or helpful, but also it's really hard sometimes with like, Obviously a lot of countries you go to, there's always a bit of a language barrier if they don't understand you. So sometimes that comes across as being rude when they might not mean to be rude. They're just, you know, they're just expressing themselves through their language. Um, so yeah, I would say everyone else that I met was really friendly. The other guy that Kate helped me with the Airbnb, he was really friendly. I, I didn't meet anyone else that was really rude so yeah everyone is really friendly so that is the end of this video i hope you enjoyed that um if you have any more questions on crack out leave them down below in the comments and i'll be sure to answer them please give this video a like and subscribe if you're not like if you're not then what are you doing like subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys soon for another video bye